The biggest police scandal in the country right now is going down in West Virginia, and almost nobody even knows about it. It hasn't made national news yet. One reporter in West Virginia exposed it, and things have escalated. And this is another one of those cases where this YouTube channel has inadvertently helped to expose government misconduct. This goes to show what an absolute necessity free speech is to our freedom. A couple of weeks ago, I released an anonymous whistleblower letter from a state trooper making specific allegations against top leadership. I had no idea that this would happen, but apparently that case kicked off what is essentially a civil war inside the West Virginia State Police that seems to have been brewing. Since my first video on this with the whistleblower's allegations, that whistleblower has been arrested. His lawyer is alleging a cover-up conspiracy going all the way to the top of the state police. Now, more breaking news. As of last night, it was revealed that the governor has ordered the seizure of the cell phones and electronic data of almost all the top leadership at the state police. Crazy, crazy stuff. This is big. People should know about this because the implications are enormous. On February 17th, I posted a video with breaking news about the scandal at the West Virginia State Police, publishing for the first time the salacious details being alleged here. I'll link that video in the description as well as the link to the letter itself. Now, the initial version of that video title included the allegation that the head of the State Police had been terminated. Within hours of posting that video, I was contacted by his attorney and told that he had in fact not been terminated demanding a correction, which I did. It apparently started to snowball from there. I started getting all sorts of con contacts from current and retired law enforcement officers with messages of support, as well as additional information. Then I started getting these additional anonymous letters. I didn't publish any of those, and I don't intend to at this point. Instead, not really wanting to be within the middle of a law enforcement civil war, I provided those letters to the appropriate authorities. One of those letters, however, made what are essentially reverse accusations against a trooper that was later discussed or disclosed or alleged to be the whistleblower. His name is Joey Comer. That was the first time that I had heard his name. I've never talked to the guy and he's not the one who gave me the letter. But I did start to hear through my contacts that the whistleblower or whistleblowers, because it seemed to me that there was more than one individual from the, just the amount of information that was provided, that they were worried that retaliation was coming from the, the leadership of the state police. Then sure enough, on February 24th, 2023, the leadership of the West Virginia State Police issued a press release announcing that the alleged whistleblower Joseph Comer, a current member of the West Virginia State Police, was arrested and charged with domestic battery and felony strangulation. Okay, wow. So they arrested the whistleblower, but there's more. So on the same day, February 24th, 2023, the attorney for the alleged whistleblower gives an interview to the media alleging that his arrest was in retaliation because he was the suspected whistleblower. Before we get to the allegations against this guy, Comer, let's look at the timing of it. So he was arrested the day before he was scheduled to testify at a hearing in front of an administrative law judge about, quote, corruption that was going on within the state police. Comer's lawyer said that the top brass of the state police had been subpoenaed to testify at that hearing where they had intended to expose their misconduct through evidence in their possession. Talking about the whistleblower here. So this hearing is set to take place on Friday morning. Then Thursday afternoon at 4.12 p.m., an attorney for the state police filed a motion seeking to prevent the agency's top staff from having to testify and be subjected to questioning. Then at 11 o'clock that night, Thursday night, the whistleblower received a call from other state troopers telling him that they were coming to his home to pick up his gun and his badge because there had been a domestic violence protective order filed against him. Comer's lawyer said that the head of the state police had traveled to the vicinity where his client worked as a trooper and told several people that he knew who the whistleblower was and that he had a hearing on Friday morning and that he was going to, quote, take care of him. According to the criminal complaint filed in Ritchie County Magistrate Court, on December 5th, in the gravel parking lot of the Sleep Inn in Ellenboro, Comer allegedly grabbed a woman around her neck during a scheduled child custody exchange. Those are key words, by the way. The woman reported that she had bruises on both sides of her neck. The alleged incident resulted in the strangulation charge of felony. The second criminal complaint alleges that on December 12th, 2022, in the gravel parking lot of the Sleep Inn in Ellenboro, a woman said that she was struck in the head with a sippy cup that Comer threw at her during a scheduled, again, child custody exchange, keywords. The woman told troopers that the incident left her with a black eye, according to court documents. The records do not indicate if the woman who reported both alleged incidents is the same person, but sources say, according to the media, that the alleged victim is also a state trooper who shares a child with Trooper Comer. One of the anonymous letters that I received said something to this effect. 
One of the important constitutional issues that the Institute for Justice is currently litigating is the ability to sue the government when they file criminal charges against someone in retaliation for their protected First Amendment speech. There's some bad case law out there saying that if probable cause exists, no matter the bad motive, you can't sue them for First Amendment retaliation, even if it was. Here, there's a similar concern. Certainly, the state police didn't create the allegations whole cloth. But let's look at the dates. One of the incidents is alleged to have occurred on December 5th, the other on December 12th. Yet, they didn't charge the alleged whistleblower until February 24th, the day before the hearing at which he was set to expose corruption among the state police leadership. Moreover, the alleged victim of those incidents is herself a state trooper. And I would agree with Comer's lawyer that that just doesn't even really pass the laugh test. I was told more was coming out. Well, last night it did. So last night, a third media report came out, and it's a bombshell. I had been hearing that this was occurring, but now it's verified. Last week, the main headquarters of the West Virginia State Police was searched by the Department of Homeland Security. That's the state-level DHS. And this was done by the order of the governor. Here's the actual order from the governor ordering... At the direction of Governor Jim Justice, the Department of Homeland Security has been directed to investigate multiple allegations of potential improper or alleged criminal actions occurring within the administration of the West Virginia State Police. Department of Homel Homeland Security Secretary Jeff Sandy was requesting state police provide electronic data, including all communications and documents for 13 troopers within the agency, including Cahill himself, who is the head. The scope of the data includes daily activity logs, both employee and detachment duty logs, emails and text messages from Monday, February 13th, 2023 through Thursday, February 28th, 2023 for the following members of the agency. And then there's a, a list of familiar names if you watched my last video, including the very top leadership of the West Virginia State Police. The head guy there, the Colonel Cahill, the head of the state police, was directed by the governor to grant any and all necessary access to systems or data that was requested. Now, the media outlet, w WCHS, obtained one of those duty logs somehow and posted it in their story on their website. They've since deleted the screenshot, but I saved it. It's a duty log entry from Sergeant B.L. Kiefer addressing the search and attempted apprehension of the alleged whistleblower, Comer, when the warrant was issued for his arrest on February 23rd. In the duty log entry, Kiefer wrote that he was called at home to contact or locate Comer and relay him to the West Virginia State Police Parkersburg under the premise of him being served with a DVP. Kiefer wrote that he spent several hours searching for Comer and learned that senior staff was attempting to ping his cell phone and utilize LPRs in searching for Corporal Comer's whereabouts. The log entry indicated that West Virginia State Police senior staffers had discussed calling out additional manpower. The sergeant wrote that he had been advised that Comer had a hearing the next morning at State Police Headquarters, where he could be easily served at that time with his legal counsel present. Additionally, this sergeant, still under the assumption that his search was still centered around a DVPO service, believed that the orders originating at the West Virginia State Police Headquarters were definitely overkill based on the very small bit of information that he had been previously provided. Despite all of this, Trooper Kiefer said that he continued searching for Comer in very desolate areas of Jackson County near Comer's home. Kiefer said that he was not able to locate Comer, but learned the next morning that there were actually felony and misdemeanor warrants issued for his arrest along with the DVP. This sergeant is now strongly questioning the decision by the West Virginia State Police senior staff in not informing the sole member that they sent, i.e. him, to locate Corporal Comer and not informing this sergeant of the felony and misdemeanor warrants that were most assuredly in effect at the time of the search. This sergeant has since learned that the West Virginia State Police senior staff has taken the position that they were afraid that Corporal Comer was a threat, but failed to inform Kiefer that they ordered him to bring him in. Kiefer went on to question why, if Comer was considered a threat, why was he not provided with the information as part of officer safety protocols? Kiefer ended the entry by writing, this sergeant is making this note on the duty log as an abridged history and record of this event. As the current West Virginia State Police administration efficacy and trustworthiness is called into question. Wow. So it sounds like the trooper that they sent to arrest the alleged whistleblower is now himself blowing the whistle, implying that the arrest was political and corrupt and in retaliation against Comer. If this is the case, it appears that the evidence has now been seized. Are they going to find communications between the state police leadership and others about locating and arresting the alleged whistleblower, either in retaliation for what he had disclosed or to prevent him from testifying at the hearing the following day? I'd love to read through those text messages and emails. How much do you really want to bet that there are communications there about yours truly? Maybe I'll get to find out eventually. 
you know, one thing that people have already asked me, did DHS need warrants to seize evidence from the senior state police staff, like their cell phones? In general, I can answer that. I once had a case where we sued a sheriff for placing a GPS tracker on a deputy's cruiser without a warrant, and then using that data to indict him on numerous felony charges. The result in that case was that the federal court said that the agency owned the cruiser and that the investigation was technically employment related and that no warrant was needed. I suspect that the present situation would fall within those same parameters and therefore no warrant is necessary. So the State Department of Homeland Security is currently investigating this matter and is expected to conclude their investigation no later than April. I'll be following this closely, so make sure you subscribe and follow along. If you have information that you want to provide about this matter, you can find my contact information at thecivilrightslawyer.com, where I'll also post links to the stories that I discussed in this video. This issue is important because... In my opinion, the major problem in policing in America is the lack of accountability. Here in West Virginia, when politicians or judges or lawyers get investigated and are found to have engaged in misconduct, that then becomes public record. The public can see it and understand what happened and what didn't happen. With law enforcement, not so much. Law enforcement has been able to successfully seal their employment records under the guise of employee privacy. In reality, they are our employees and we should know about any substantiated misconduct by law enforcement officers acting on duty, acting under color of law. As always, thanks for watching. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. I'll see you next time.